this NFL preseason week three picks and DFS lineups on the Sports Gambling Podcast Network is presented by WinBet. WinBet is now live in Colorado, Indiana, Michigan, New Jersey, Tennessee, and Virginia. From boosted parlays to in game odds on every major sport, WinBet has what you need to win. Sign up today to receive a $500 risk free sports bet. Download the WinBet app now or visit WYNNBet.com and start winning today. We're also brought to you by PropSwap. America's number one app to buy and sell sports bets. Use promo code SGP on your first deposit and receive up to five hundred dollars in bonus cash. That's PropSwap.com. Promo code SGP. We're also brought to you by Pixwise. Pixwise is the number one home free sports betting picks. Visit Pixwise.com to make your next bet better. We're also brought to you by Underdog Fantasy. We're <laughs> sign up at UnderdogFantasy.com with promo code SGPN and receive a twenty five dollar entry to use. In Best Ball Mania 2 for a chance to win $1 million. And of course, we're also brought to you by the SGPN app, where you have your chance to win $100,000 in NFL Week 1 exclusively in the SGPN app. Ooh, welcome to the Sports Gambling Podcast. Guess what? Sean. Stacking the money green, not with us today. Rest in peace. I'm going to go to the wide shot for those watching on YouTube, youtube.com slash sports gambling podcast, where instead I have good old Joe Theismann, how to be a champion every day in his place, just to remind him that some of us are here picking preseason week three DFS lineups and games like a champion. Uh, I can't say the same. About him, by the way, uh, shout out to Sean. I'm sure he's doing great things down in Costa Rica. We'll hear lots of fun stories about animals and uh, fruity cocktails when we get back. But some of us, like I said, sticking to the business. We got games to pick because we do brag about picking every game against the spread. I guess maybe it's a team effort uh, when we're making preseason picks. All right, well, we got some. Uh, we're going to do a DFS lineup. We're going to do the Friday slate. Uh, we got Terrell coming on. Uh, to break that down, and then joining us to preview uh, the week three preseason slate, we got the machine, aka Sports Nerd, aka Moon Off Manji. But before we get to that DFS lineup, you know what? Actually, I know we're here to talk about NFL, but we got actual college football games this weekend, and guess what? You're going to go head over to win bet in Colorado, in Indiana, in Michigan, New Jersey, Tennessee, Virginia, because you got real college football to bet on this weekend, folks, exclusive rewards right at your fingertips. Make sure you head over to win bet, download the app, take advantage of the boosted parlays, take advantage of the in-game odds on every major sport. WinBet has what you need to win. Download the app today and get that risk free $500 sports bet. Again, download that app today. $500 free sports bet. Download bet win. That that song gets me juiced up. Uh and my my audio levels uh I got I'm way doing way too much today. My audio levels uh also way jacked up, but joining me on the line to break down this glorious, glorious Friday four game DFS slate. Hello, all rise. New York Giants, Joe Judge fan. Terrell, you can find his work on sportsgamblingpodcast.com. You can find his work, <laughs> ac- work across the Sports Gambling Podcast Network, Ether, in the Slack space, sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash Slack. Terrell, what's what's good, brother? What's going on? What's going on? They messed up today. They got two Giants fans, two <laughs> Hoagies fans on the pod talking. We might we might not even get to the games. We might just talk about Virginia Tech and New oh, York season this year. Don't get me started. Still have not sent in my donation to the Hokies. I'm I'm still on the fence about Justin Fuente. I don't want to talk about it. Next week we can talk about it when they're fixing to be upsetting the the fighting. Tar Heels of North Carolina, but we digress. We're here to talk about meaningless slash meaningful to some NFL football. 
I will say when it comes to preseason, I don't know about you, Terrell, but I, I, I do enjoy the full lineup slate versus the showdown slate. The showdown slate feels way more of a dart throw. Uh, any preferences mm. in terms of the style of preseason, like complete DGen DFS you like to play? I don't know. I kind of like the showdown slate because I can just throw a defense into the captain mm. slot and I'm just multiplied on extra points. So that's kind of a little cheat code there. But I do like the chance to pick and choose certain guys out of certain games that, uh, especially those guys that are on the chopping block, to be able to go up there and throw out there and get one last. One last hurrah in the NFL before they um, go back to bagging groceries. And that's the interesting thing about this week. I think you have a convergence of styles. And when it comes to preseason coaching, some of these guys are playing their starters a half. Some of these guys are not playing anyone that resembles a starter. It seems <laughs> like uh, it's going to be part of the read is just figuring out which guys are going to be out there from my take before we get into the lineup. Cause you'll see it. It does seem like the Chiefs and the Panthers are two teams you circle to where they might actually be rolling out the starters. Uh, maybe I don't know if you have any nug real quick, any a high level nuggets on these four games in terms of playing time. Um, yeah, so Andy Reid came out said he's definitely playing the starters the first yeah. half. Uh, it wasn't it wasn't for certain. He kind of like came back and doubled back around and was like, oh yeah, we're going to play them. But you know, we'll also play it by ear too. It depends what I see. If I like what I see, then maybe, you know, they don't play as much, but if, if not, then maybe they keep going to half. Uh, Carolina seems like they want to roll out Sam Darnold a little bit more. I was at the Carolina game last week. Sam Darnold literally got one half a series because they uh, got an interception by Hassan Reddick. Sam Darnold took it a little bit further and then that was about it. Um, and, uh, Robert Sala for the jets. He seems like he's going to be definitely playing the starters a little bit. He, uh, quoted bill Belichick, Andy Reed and Mike Tomlin as all playing their starters and was like, well, if they're playing their starters, then I might as well play mine too. So, uh, and then I know for a fact that Indy and Detroit both agreed amongst each other that they would not play each other's starters. Yeah, it, it's it's really odd. I mean, I, as a Giants fan, I, I'd be lying to you if I told you I was a little bit. Uh, I was happy with the fact that Daniel Jones hasn't seen any snaps yet. <laughs> like, uh, I, I, I look I, again. I you know I love to lean on my youth coaching experience, but you know preseason's great because you can get uh, used to playing the game. I you know call me old fashioned. You mentioned one of my guys, so let me just get it started. Sam Darnold. It did seem like he was a safe play to both get enough reps and potentially be going against a bunch of backups. Mm -hmm. Pittsburgh is still a good defense. Maybe the backups are good. I did really want to target this Eagles secondary because they've looked like hot trash once the starters get away from the field. But uh, I'm high on Sam Darnold this year, so it felt right to kind of close the preseason having him be my quarterback. Of course, everyone is fifty five hundred dollars this week. Uh, who's your quarterback, Terrell? Oh man, you know I'm rocking with the boy. If you tell me that the Chiefs starters are playing a half, of course I'm starting Patrick Mahomes. I will never get a cheaper price than fifty five hundred dollars for Patrick Mahomes in well, in DFS. It's funny. Uh, I may have multiple lineups, but those are the two quarterbacks I have the exposure to. Again, do you want a half of someone who sucks, or do you want like a quarter or a and half, half of fucking Pat Mahomes? <laughs> I know it's Pat Mahomes. Look. All right, so if you looked at the game last week against the Cardinals and you really watched the game, Pat Mahomes was missing timing. Like, that's really why he kept playing for so long because he just couldn't get the timing right. He was targeting Nicole Hartman, uh, who I may be talking about a little bit later. Uh, he was targeting him a lot and just couldn't get the targeting right on the slants in the red zone, and they couldn't come away with a touchdown. So I expect Pat Mahomes to drive them down the field easily and to get that timing right this time in the red zone and get a couple touchdowns. Now, you know, I, it's funny when when you got a exposure to Pac Patrick Mahomes in the preseason, it seems like you're doing something wrong. Like, wow, this is really chalky. <laughs> this is, but I mean, if he's going to get the reps uh, against backups yeah. in Minnesota, probably it feels like, and, and a backup second, like the secondary wasn't exactly good last year. So, all right, my first running back, I'm going to that same game and I'm going to target a running back on the other side, because I do think Kansas city could, could score. And I don't think Minnesota is going to have their starters anywhere near the field. So I'm going to go Amir Abdullah. Uh, he can catch passes. It seems like he could threaten to be the the snap leader from the running back position. Uh, if nothing else, doing him a favor to get some good tape out there before they cut him. Uh, Amir Abdullah, fifty five hundred, Minnesota at Kansas City. Terrell. 
All right. Uh, my first running back, I'm going back over to the Jets Eagles game and I'm going to start the rookie Michael Carter. Mm. Uh, if you look last week, he didn't get any reps with the first team last week. Uh, he, it was all Tevin Coleman and Ty Johnson, which is a little bit concerning for season long fantasy. But uh, if you're telling me that, you know, Robert Sala is going to play his starters some, and then Michael Carter is going to get majority of the burn after that against third, second, fourth strings and guys that are about to be bagging groceries after this. And then I'm absolutely going to take that. Michael Carter needs some good tape out there so he yeah. can prove that, Hey, I want to get into the starting lineup. I want to play with the one. Mm-hmm. So this could be his opportunity. He sees how his teammate over there, his former college teammate over there in Denver, Javante Williams is looking fire. Yeah, He's got absolutely. A, uh, your turn, sir. All right. J- j- my next running back, I'm going to go to Detroit, a team that's going to want to pound the rock a little bit. Uh, it sounds like they're not going to play their starters. We already know about the Swift situation. We've been pounding the fade DeAndre Swift for a long time on the Sports Gambling Podcast. <laughs> Love Jamal Williams. How smart does my thirty percent Jamal Williams ownership in underdog best ball look now? Uh, come at me. I'm going to go to another running back on that team. Someone I have in some dynasty, and that's a uh, Oregon State former Beaver, Jamar Jefferson. Uh, another guy uh, project him to, if not lead the running back group in snaps to be close to it. Uh, so again, just looking for the opportunity with the running back positions going Jamar Jefferson, Detroit hosting Indy Terrell. Uh, uh, so my second guy, I'm going over to Pittsburgh and coach Tomlin, you know, seven, five, seven guy. He told me that Najee's not playing. We're not playing Najee this last game. So uh, I'm thinking Jalen Samuels here going a little bit further down the depth chart, but with the running back position, I just really need like some type of production. He gets the rushing load and then he also can catch out the backfield. So I'm just hoping for a couple of dump offs, uh, maybe some late garbage time. And he catches a bunch of passes out the backfield and can run up the score for me just a little bit. I like it. All right. Let me, uh, let me pair my, uh, the guy who I would be stacking with Patrick Mahomes. And that's uh, he's, I believe he's led, uh, he led the team in snaps from the wide receiver group last week. And that's McCole Harbin. Uh, Mm -hmm. I don't know if the, the fantasy community has willed their way to like elevating him, or if this is just truly like, they need to see what they have from a guy who hasn't necessarily performed uh, when it's mattered. Again, I I think he could be the guy to stack. If you want to play a stack with Patrick Mahomes, McCole Hardman, 5,500. Again, everyone's 5,500. I don't know why I said that, but hosting the Minnesota Vikings who should be playing all backups. Uh, Terrell, who's your uh, first wide receiver? Well, obviously we didn't talk about our lineups before we came on to the show today because my next wide receiver is Miko Hartman. Nice. Uh, like I said, I'm stacking them with Pat Mahomes here and uh, I watched that, that first half. Cause I'm a huge Pat Mahomes fan. If anybody wants to join the Pat Mahomes fan club, I am the president. I am accepting nice. membership. I will send out my email later. And if you want to join, you can, but Miko Hartman, they were just off a few times. Like he was targeting him heavy in the red zone, like heavy in the red zone. And they were just off on those slants by just an inch every single time. So I think he really wants to get Miko Hartman some shine, get him a really good contract at the end of his tenure. And so, you know, it's going to start here and hopefully it's a, either a long burner that goes for a touchdown or just something in the red zone. But I think he gets into the end zone this week. Like it. All right. Second guy is going to be my stack and that's uh Terrace Marshall jr. Uh, again, they're playing starters. He appears to be locked in as uh, the, the big slot starter. Uh, this team could be very fun uh, to watch this year. And I think he's going to be a reason why. So I just, I, I like the chances that Sam, Sammy D and uh, Terrence Marshall hook up for a touchdown in their half of play in this game. So stacking me some Darnold Terrell. All right, second, I'm going to uh, Indiana. I'm doing Desmond Ooh. Patman. <laughs> Patman, Patman, Patman. I, yeah, I know you're talking. One of the other, Lots but of snaps. Yeah, uh, uh, second year, sixth round guy, um, six four. So I think 225 pounds. I think that uh, watching him this preseason, he's had six targets in the first game, five targets in the second game, put together a pretty good tape. And he's one of those guys, like one of those guys that's, late, late round draft pick, uh, could be on the cut chopping block this year. I know it's his name and a couple other names that are on the chopping block of guys that 
are fighting for that last wide receiver spot. I think all the other five spots have been locked up and there's one more. And I think that Patmon is really going to get it. So uh, I'm going with him. I think that he has an opportunity. And then if Ellinger is going the whole game, then he's definitely going to get the workload because that's a gunslinger right there. Yeah. I mean, I, it, it's good. It's certainly going to be an interesting situation to watch. I, I think it, if I'm a Colts fan, I'm really worried about the health of my starting quarterback. I'll say that. All right. Mm-hmm. My, my third wide receiver, I'm going back to the jets. I'm actually going to play a little further down the depth chart and that's Braxton Berrios just because like, this is a perfect, like, I wasn't a fan of him at Miami, but hit this type of receiver. He's going to be uh, a lot of comfortable throws for whoever's throwing it to him. I don't even know if it's with the starters in New York. But I think mm-hmm. Braxton Berrios can see a lot of snaps across multiple units. And again, he's going to be running those routes. He's playing for a roster spot. So we could see the, Hey, Hey vet, you know, we're, we're going to cut you. So we'll give you a little extra time to get that tape down. Uh, I like the profile for him. So through Braxton Berrios in is my last uh, wide receiver. Also wanted to fade that um, the, the second and third string and fourth string for the Eagles is maybe the worst secondary I've seen in, in a very long, like not even yeah. just trying to throw shade at the no, Eagles. They, they have looked horrible and I get it. New coach and everything. But if you want to get, tell me uh, what team or what unit has looked the worst out of anyone in preseason, the, 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 the defense there in Philly is, is tough to look at. All right, Terrell third wide receiver. Hey, I'll, I'll accept any Eagles slander whenever we can get it. But uh, coming to my, my third wide receiver, it's a guy uh, from here in Columbia, South Carolina, Shy Smith Ooh. playing for the Panthers. Uh, he was one of the gr- highest graded wide receivers of the preseason f- so far by PFF. Um, he's a big play guy. He can get down the field and make some crazy catches. I've seen him play at USC a couple of times and he's really a baller. And I think that, uh, especially if the guy, the guys outside that depth chart, outside your DJ Moore, outside your Robbie Anderson and Terrence Marshall, if those guys kind of get some burn early and then are put out, then Shai Smith is at that point the number one receiver that they have. So yeah. I think that he's going to have an opportunity. He's going to get the workload, and then they have a good uh, a good stack of QBs with PJ Walker back there as well that can get him the ball. So I'm going with Shai Smith in my third slot. Yeah, I mean, I, again, I, I kind of like what this offense can. It, I, I like the Carolina offensive situation. I'm excited about it. All right, so I, because I didn't stack the Mahomes, I didn't put Mahomes in with one of his receivers in this lineup. I did go with a second Chief, and that's the tight end. Uh, another, uh, another me like looking towards my dynasty team for someone who's going to get some reps here. And and I think uh, all you read about Noah Gray in Chiefs camp is that this dude is going to get some playing time this year. He's he's fighting to back up Travis Kelsey, which of course you don't get much work behind Travis Kelsey, but you do get that work in the preseason. He's looked good in the preseason, so I, I threw him in as my guy. He might get some reps with the ones, and he could because I could see them not playing a ton of Kelsey, but playing the ones a little bit. And Gray would be the guy in there, so I threw him in as my tight end. Uh, who you got, Terrell, for your tight end? Man, I'm gonna have to go against you. Ooh. He said he's playing the ones. Not- he said he's playing the ones. If I get a one half of Travis Kelsey, that's better than every single tight end that was that I could have picked from. All I right. will take one half of Travis Kelsey. So I got Travis Kelsey in my spot. If I can get a few catches of uh, some couple yardage and then maybe a goal line look by Pat Mahomes in that first half, then I think that that's going to be a good output to get me, uh, you know, a hundred fifty thousand dollars. I like it. I mean. I, I, that's the best part about these DFS lineups in, in the preseason is the, 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 you know, I think it's even the, the variance makes it even more likely to win the money. Mm-hmm. I mean, not, not to say that our listeners aren't the sharpest knives in the drawer, but I think this certainly like brings the probability of the extra sharps down a bit. All right. Last guy. Uh, I looked down the, the, the depth chart in Minnesota because I did want to grab a receiver. I do expect that they'll want to work their passing game a little bit and they're not playing the starters. So I'm going to friend of the program's son, Chad Beebe. Uh, yeah, I, yeah, that's right. I'm going to Chad Beebe. This is more of just me repping the brand than anything else. I think he's going to get, he should get some decent work out there. Uh, maybe you'll tell me I, I'm a complete idiot Terrell, but that's my flex. Who are you going with the flex spot? 
Now I'm still in that game, and I'm going uh, the Minnesota running back AJ Rose Jr. Ooh. So uh, the thought of this is he's an undrafted rookie that really wants to make this team. Yep. And guess what they did uh, earlier this week? They signed Edo Smith. Oh, and so Edo Smith is coming in, and you don't sign a guy late, and you, no, don't, you don't think that you're going to keep him. So now AJ Rose has a fire under his ass. He's got to really show up really big. He had 25 carries for 100 yards in that first game against the Broncos. If they handle the ball and give him some more of the workload, he could a nice run, maybe a score, something to uh, put his name out there. So I'm yeah. going with AJ Rose Jr. in my in my flex. AJ, AJ Rose Jr. could be a dog. All right. Defense. Uh, I mean, if Detroit's not playing their starters and we already think they're going to be horrible, I'm going to play the Colts defense. Cool. All right. We all agree. All right. Terrell. Yep, what do you yep, say? Okay. Easy. Didn't even, didn't even have to question I, it. I oh, knew we're playing the Colts defense. Yeah, I knew it was going to be the chalky defense, but it, it does seem like there, there's going to be a touchdown scored there. All right. Uh, that was fun. Terrell. Uh, I, I gotta be honest. I have five lineups already for this. I here's the <laughs> here's the problem. I started doing the prep work last night. I have five lineups already. How how many lineups do you have currently for this preseason slate? I have three lineups. Oh, okay. I have three lineups. You got so two to catch one, up. Yeah, I de- I definitely played a Sam Darnold angle. You know, I'm big on Sam Darnold this year. I've been quoted saying that Sam Darnold is going to be the number one overall QB in week one. In week one, <laughs> I like that. Yes. It's a good, good schedule. He's got the hey. revenge spot. Yeah. Yeah. The revenge spot. That's going to be number one QB in week one. I'm telling you right now, if you draft him late, draft Sam Darnold late, he's going to be number one overall week one. But I also threw one in there with Sam Ellinger uh, just because he's a gunslinger and he's the, probably the most mobile quarterback that is out on the slate right now uh, outside of PJ Walker. So I think uh, Sam Ellinger is going to be one of the guys that just throws the ball and he could in with three touchdowns because he just threw the ball so much. Multiple uses of the word gunslinger. I like it. All right. We're going to take a, before we get to the week three preseason lines, uh, we're going to take a quick break to talk about prop swap. That's right. Prop swap America's number one app to buy and sell sports bets. Football seasons is about to kick off and, uh, and prop swap is here to this, to make the bet this, the best season yet. Again, you you gotta you gotta go for two. You gotta get those two futures. You don't need to win, right? Like this is the premise. You buy two of your futures. All right, let's use an example. Trey Lance opened up at three hundred to one to win the MVP way back when. Had you bought two tickets, you could keep one in your pocket because that would be a fun ass thing to brag about. Hitting a three hundred to one prop swap or prop on Trey Lance to win the MVP. Well, now it's seventy five to one. And typically these binary outcomes, you got to wait, you got to sweat it out. And you're most likely not going to get there with the long shot. So what can you do? Head over to prop swap and you can sell that ticket now, right now for a profit. What? It's not even over yet. How could you sell a ticket for it? It could potentially lose. You could still sell it for a profit. Cause right now it's 75 to one. So the odds have come down. You've increased your value. The average seller on prop swap makes over $500 per month just listing and selling those profitable tickets. Again, get started today by going to propswap.com or download the prop swap app. Prop swap is where America buys and sells sports books. We're also going to take a quick second to talk about PicksWise. PicksWise is the number one home of free sports betting picks, props and parlays helmed by a team of trend watching data devouring sports fanatics, giving you the who, how, and why behind every prediction for every game, every day, and every sport. All these picks are free. All this data is free. All this information is free. Visit pickswides.com to make your next bet better. Joining us on the line to help break down this glorious week three, the final week in the preseason. Mr. Machine, aka Sports Nerd 824 on Twitter, aka Moonoff Manji, writer and host of many podcasts and many <laughs> articles for the Sports Gambling Podcast Network. Moonoff, what's good? What's going on, Kramer? It's week three already. Jesus I, Christ, I, man. Know, we are what? A week and a half away. We're gonna be sitting in October and we're gonna be like, holy shit, it's week eight already. What yeah. the hell? What has happened? <laughs> 
Uh, all right. So before we get started breaking down the slate, we're going to do a, uh, a, we have a new friend of the program and that's uh that's prize picks. You know, we like the new hotness when it comes to fantasy, everyone's already playing uh, the big, the big boy games. Well, this uh, it's got a little, uh, it, it's, it's got a little fantasy to it. It's got a little, uh, a, a little dabbling in the, uh, the over underworld uh, reminds me a little bit of monkey knife fight. Well, they're new to the game prize picks where of course you can use the promo code where of course we're bringing you a little bit uh, for you hundred percent instant deposit match. I'll be honest. I put in, I put in the money. It showed up right away. Free money. Yep. I, I see. I mm-hmm. see Terrell nodding over there. Um, not the kind of bonuses you're getting everywhere. So uh, here's the way it works. Uh, you, you play three over unders, pretty simple. Uh, we're going to play a quick game. Uh, give out a quick card for the NFL futures market. Uh, I'll go first because I'm a, I'm a, I'm that kind of gentleman. I might open the door for a lady, but I'm not, I'm not letting these guys go before me. And uh, it is, we are going to do some NFL futures. So we will be hearing the word under for my first one. Give me under Derek Henry, 1550 and a half rushing yards. Uh, let me also get under for Antonio Gibson, 1025 and a half rushing yards. Again, lots of the smart, sharp community out there talking to you about how Antonio Gibson's role is going to expand. Not so fast. And I, I'm not a believer that a toe injury is gone. Last guy I'm going to throw on the card. Give me Alvin Kamara under 950 and a half rushing yards. Again, don't know what the offense is going to look like, but I do think we're going to see more Latavius Murray uh, than in years past, especially in the running game. So those are my three. They happen to be unders and uh, I dropped it in. I dropped it in for uh, you know, a little three correct. I, I did a flex play for those out there playing the game. I did a flex oh, play. He's scary. I, I <laughs> three correct. And my 20 is going to turn into 45. Uh, that's my entry moon off. Why don't you take us through? I know you're a big player prop guy, host of the prop yeah. cast, the NFL prop cast. So take us through. Give me, give me the three uh, over unders that you like for your entry. Yeah. I, I like your under angle, especially because it's, it's season long props, but I, I feel like I'm uh, uh life is too short for unders. Right. But so all three of mine, I'm going to go with overs. Uh, my first one is TJ Hawkinson over 770 and a half receiving yards. Um, second one, I'm going with Russell Wilson. Mm. Let's, we're going to let Russ cook this yes. year. Yes. New offensive coordinator over 4,250 and a half passing yards. And my last one, this is probably my favorite one kind of underrated that nobody's really talking about Damian Harris, uh, new England Patriots running back over 845 and a half rushing yards. Yes. Um, same thing as you Kramer flex play, but I also did the power you know play what? on, yeah, on I, both. I realized I was being a pussy by only doing the flex <laughs> play where you can win even if you go two for three. So I also just filed it into a uh, a full power play as well. So power play, 20 wins a hundred. So yeah, there we go. Let's so go. I, that's how confident I am. I went with both entries for uh, flex play and a power play. That's so those what we, are my three. That's what we do here on the SGPN. We uh, we let it ride. Terrell? Oh, I'm only doing the power plays there we and go. it's over, there we over, go. over. So starting, I'm going to absolutely fade you. So one of us is going <laughs> to win because I'm taking over Antonio Gibson, Ooh. 1,025 rushing yards. There is no way. Antonio Gibson can be the RB1 in fantasy this year. He is that good. They are going to utilize him. It's not just going to be all Ryan Fitzpatrick because when you let him throw too much, he's going to throw interceptions. This is true. got to run the ball with somebody. So I like Antonio Gibson there. I like Michael Carter to go over that 575 rushing yards. If they really, really like this guy, he's not getting to work with the ones right now, but Tevin Coleman is in front of him. I doubt that he can stay healthy the entire season. And then Ty Johnson there too, I think is a really path to Michael Carter to getting uh, the workload there. And then finally, Kyle Pitts over 800 in 0.5 receiving yards, he is definitely going to be the number one rookie tight end ever 
and I'm Long betting cocks. go. I am putting everything on it here. I think that he's doing. I already got some future tickets on Kyle Pitts, rookie offensive rookie of the year. So that's my entry, Kyle Pitts. All right, Antonio Gibson, Michael Carter, twenty five to win. One twenty-five. You know, I like how you went full. You said you guys are 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 complete pansies for going with the flex play. And remember, use that promo code SGP for a hundred percent instant deposit match, hundred dollar instant deposit match with that promo code SGP. All right, guys. Now that we got that out of the way, which by the way, uh, unsolicited uh, prize, uh, pr- unsolicited prize picks uh, feedback. I'm going to be playing more of these entries during the year for sure. <laughs> All right, no doubt. Friday. <laughs> We're uh, we got col- we got college football this weekend for realsies, but we got uh, we got the final week of the preseason Friday 4 p.m. The slate kicks off. Indy heads to Detroit, where Detroit is a two point home dog, plus 115 on the money line, minus 135 for the Colts. 33 and a half is the total. I'm gonna start with you, Munaf. Who do you like in this one? God, this this, this is a little hard for me. Um, the the lines are 0 and two and the Colts are two and on this preseason. And you almost got to think that Dan Campbell probably wants to get at least one victory before the season, like the preseason's over just to kind of have that positive momentum going into that week off before this full season starts. And then the season starting, um, I'm going to go with the lions here, man. Uh, I don't feel great about it, but I'll take that plus two. Uh, and again, we'll take the under on this game also because why not? Right. We were SGP was, uh, was hot, absolutely hot in week one week two. It kind of carried over. Also, I think it'll cover into week three also. So maybe a little parlay to there too. If you're really wow. feeling frisky, if you're really, really full, full, uh, hashtag dead and only, uh, you know, I'm going to recycle this because I did use it on the NFC North preview, but I, I want to read a quote uh, from Dan Campbell. I love the fact that we are known as meatheads. I'm a meathead. I have limited brain capacity. I like that. I'm good with that. I have zero problem with that. That's him speaking to Chris Spielman. Yeah, he obviously wants to get a win here. Terrell, do you do you agree? Absolutely not. They're freaking <laughs> terrible guys. Like, come on. <laughs> even even the third or fourth strings are bad. Like, these are guys that probably should be, I don't know, working at FedEx or something like that. Mm. And no, I'm not buying it at all. I don't think Dan Campbell is gonna light a fire at anybody. They know they're bad. I'm going with the Colts. Yeah, well, I mean, good luck to you. Uh, you do like the <laughs> gunslinger. Uh, you you mentioned that earlier. Uh so so mm-hmm. All right, way too much time talking about Detroit versus Indy. Next up, Philly heads to New York. Joint practice, uh, Smorgasbord this week. Jets four point home dogs minus, or I'm sorry, did I write this down wrong? Jets are a four point favorites. Yep, they're favored minus two twenty five on the money line. Eagles plus one eighty five. Thirty four is the total. Uh, it's hard. I'll start with this one. Uh, I'll start on this one, guys. It's hard for me to want to take the Eagles. Uh, just with the way the backups have looked on defense, it seems like any competent NFL unit can pass on this. Uh, Terrell, which way are you going? Oh yeah, I'm riding with the Jets. I think Robert Sala said that he is following Reed Tomlin and Belichick's footsteps by playing the starters. Uh, so I'm I'm riding with Zach Wilson against that Eagles secondary. It's terrible. Munaf. hundred percent agree with you guys. I mean, I don't know what the hell this Eagles team is doing down there. Um, Jalen hurts. We saw last week. He didn't play because of a uh, injury got pulled last minute, but he was dancing uh, pregame. So we don't know what's going on with that, but the jets uh, agree with everything Terrell said there that they want to get this victory. Let's get some momentum going into the start of the season. The Eagles are going to be a dumpster fire. Sorry, Sean. Breaking news. Uh, we'll be bringing this up with Sean on air. Uh, the <laughs> Jalen hurts stomach gate and why the coach felt the need to lie about I f- watching him talk about the situation. I felt like I was watching uh, my youngest daughter lie, try to lie about how she didn't make the mess. It was really, really <laughs> pathetic Four thirty. Well, <laughs> so, you know, this is the, actually the second time that they pulled Jalen hurts when there was nothing wrong with them. Well, it, 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 I want, this is good. This is so I, You know, I don't want to get, I'm going to save it, but trade had trade loading Deshaun Watson trade loading. All right, four thirty oh, on Friday on the West Coast. Pittsburgh heads to Carolina. Carolina minus three and a half, minus one seventy on the money line. Pittsburgh plus one fifty. Thirty five is the total. I think I know where Terrell's going in this one, and myself because it does seem like Carolina is going to play the starters where Pittsburgh isn't. 
any reason yep. to take Pittsburgh here. We know Tomlin doesn't give a shit about the preseason. Munoff? Nope. He already said that Dwayne yep. Haskins is starting this game. It's I don't horrible. think Dwayne Haskins is a starting quarterback in this league, let alone a backup. Let's go with Boy. the Panthers. High yeah. on the Panthers going into the into the season also. So give me the give me the Panthers. Terrell. Cosine. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. You know I'm 90 minutes from Charlotte. Shout out to the 704. We going with Panthers <laughs> that, that, minus three and about. a half. Sir Purr, baby. Sir Purr. He's a, he's our guy. He's our official mascot of the Sports Gambling Podcast Network. Last game on Friday, 5 p.m. kick on the West Coast. Minnesota heads to Kansas City, where the Chiefs are minus four and a half, minus two hundred on the money line, plus one seventy for the Vikings. Thirty-eight and a half is the total. Uh, Zimmer is typically a guy we back in the preseason moon off, but yeah. And Terrell, I'm going to let you go first here. The Chiefs seem to be playing their starters. There is no way I'm not backing Patrick Mahomes. One half of Patrick Mahomes is better than two halves of the Vikings against nobody in the second half. Give me the Chiefs minus four. <laughs> Muna. Something's not right with the Minnesota Vikings, right? We've talked about how Mike Zimmer loves winning or playing hard in the preseason, but something's not right there. I go with the whole vaccination thing, COVID thing, whatever's going on. But um, yeah, I agree with you guys. Uh, maybe a first half bet on uh, Kansas City too, since they're playing their uh, stars. Pretty sure they won't be playing in the second half, but uh, this Minnesota team just does not look right right now. If you if you as a franchise are focused more on how to expand the size of your meeting rooms to accommodate your quarterback to make sure you can stay <laughs> socially distanced, I don't think you're focused oh, hot, on winning hot, games. Hot, 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 hot. I'll join you guys and just stay chalky as all a uh, fuck. Uh, at least Moonoff and I took a dog with the first game, Terrell. Well, other than that, we're we're a- extremely ashy hey. right now. Saturday morning, 10 a.m. Green Bay heads to Buffalo, where the Bills are minus nine and a half preseason. What? Minus 425 on the money line. <laughs> <laughs> Packers plus 320, 36 and a half on the is the total. At a principle, I don't see why you wouldn't take the 320 here, although the Packers have looked like a hot mess. Yep. Moon off, explain this crazy line to me. Yeah, I, I think uh, Sean McDermott came out said that majority of the starters will be playing in this game, including Josh Allen. We're not exactly sure how long they'll be playing, but they will be playing. So, um, give me the Packers, man. Uh, I think it's too <laughs> many points for a preseason game. Come on, nine and a half. Maybe they dominate the first half, do the Bills, but uh, Green Bay has to salvage something here in the preseason. I'll take the plus nine and a half, sprinkle a little bit on the money line, also. Anyway, you're taking the favorite, Terrell. Huge number considering the total is thirty six and a half. Look, the most disrespected person in the league is Jordan Love. That's true. Jordan Love, Jordan Love got ousted when Aaron Rodgers said that he wasn't playing. Everybody said, no, Jordan Love can't lead this team. Jordan Love can't do that. Now he's getting over the injured shoulder and they said he might play. He's definitely going to go out there and get them a money line win. I'm back in the Packers, <laughs> especially if Jordan Love is out there throwing the ball. Yeah, I mean, shout out to the books laying a putting out a minus four twenty five on Buffalo and just saying, <laughs> you know what, come beat us with three to one on the Packers. All right, three p.m. on Saturday, Baltimore heads across town to take on the Washington Football Team that actually plays in Maryland for those uh, trivia nerds at home. Plus one fifty on the money line, Baltimore minus three and a half, minus one seventy, thirty two and a half is the total. There's nothing to discuss here because all we do nope. is back the preseason ATS God. Uh, Harbaugh, right? We we're laying the points, right? No argument for me. Cool. Yeah, I can't. I can't see a reason not to back Harbaugh here, even what? even it's, though it doesn't look good. I can't see a reason. Is it nineteen in a row? Yeah, I think it was, yeah, nineteen. Yeah, I it's think at, so. yeah, it's at eighteen or nineteen, something uh, like that. And normally, I back the QB battles. Well, quote unquote QB battle that's going on, but Harbaugh already beat the Saints, so nope. Yeah, he knows what he's doing. He understands that wins in the preseason matter, and uh, especially uh, covering the spread. Next up, 4 p.m. on the West Coast, Chicago heads to Tennessee. This is an intriguing game. I definitely have circled as this as one that I want to watch. Don't know who's going to get the starts, but Chicago favorite minus three on the road, minus 155 on the money line. Tennessee plus 135. 35 and a half is the total. All right, Terrell, starting with you, are we are we playing? Are we playing Chicago because we think Justin Fields running around is just too much for that Tennessee defense? Absolutely. 
Absolutely. Uh, Justin Fields is getting the start. So uh, Matt Nagy said Justin Fields getting the start. He's playing the first half. So I'm definitely rolling with the first half of Justin Fields just to get them out. And Mike Vrabel is one of those coaches that doesn't care about pre- preseason. He doesn't care. He's just trying That's to true. get it over with and look at his guys. So I'm, I'm back in Nagy and the Bears here. Munaf? Yeah, the, uh, you got to also keep in mind that there's a huge COVID outbreak going on right now for the Tennessee Titans. <laughs> yeah, this and, is true. Uh, Vrabel might not even be on the sideline, but we'll see what happens when it comes to Saturday. Also, keep in mind the Tennessee Titans came out and said they're starting Matt, Matt Barkley. Okay, that, I think that's all you need to know. <laughs> <laughs> that's all you need to know. Justin Fields versus Matt Barkley. Give me Chicago Bears. This is locked territory, possibly for me. Oh my I- God. You know what? It's, it is crazy with the the USC quarterbacks. I mean, how how is uh, Matt Barkley still in the league? Josh Rose, the, the LA quarterback, Josh Rose, still, yeah, still in the league. Um, Matt Leinert's your biggest example. Oh my God, they're all. Oh hard. my God, he was here forever. <laughs> Five, yo, he was in the league forever. Oh wait, so you guys both on? Uh, you're both on Chicago, hundred uh, percent. Man, we are doing a lot of agreeing. Uh, I like that. It means we're going to win some money. All right, Arizona at New Orleans. New Orleans minus three and a half. Minus one ninety on the money line. Arizona plus one sixty. Thirty four is the total. Moon off. They were dancing after the last W. I think Jameis got low and then ate the W. Um, none of this was <laughs> metaphorically speaking, of course. Uh, I love Jameis as a fantasy quarterback. I love that he, what he could bring to the team. Uh, Sean Payton just doesn't give a fuck about preseason. Why are they favored? Yeah, uh, I don't know. I mean. It, I think we're pretty sure that Swinson will be the starter week one of the regular season. Um, I think this is a more important game possibly for Arizona, right? Because I, you know, I, I think we can say that Kingsbury is on the hot seat, oh, but yeah. for sure. Right. And then I, I think that there's some, there's some positional battle still going on in, in Arizona there. So from what I've been reading, so I think that they'll put in more of an effort there. Uh, the dancing will not be happening in the <laughs> locker room for the Saints this uh, weekend. Uh, I'll take care. Uh, sorry, Arizona mm. plus the points. Yeah, Terrell, you agree? Oh no, I'm laying oh. the points with the Ooh. Saints. It's QB one, QB one with Jameis, man. Uh, he's they still haven't named him the starter, and I feel like that's probably if Jordan loves the most disrespected. Jameis might be the second most disrespected. The fact that he's still in a QB battle with Taysom Hill. There's a QB battle going on with Taysom Hill. Mm-hmm. Tight end. So absolutely not. I'm rolling with uh the Saints here. I think that well, they'll get some good quarterback play from both quarterbacks and it'll go longer in the game. Yeah, I mean, hopefully uh the <clears throat> simplicity simplicity of the Cliff Kitchens offense isn't too uh simple even for the preseason. <laughs> but I'm also gonna also, take also no Kyler Murray. No Kyler Murray. I'm also gonna take Arizona because I, I just I'm not getting behind this New Orleans team. I mm. Yeah, let's move on. Tampa at Houston, 5 p.m. on the West Coast. Tampa minus four and a half, minus two ten on the money line. Houston plus one seventy five. Thirty six and a half is the total. Of course, uh, Moon off. I'll let you start, but of course, the new head coach there in Houston learned from the very best in John Harbaugh. He's doing it on the field in the preseason. Of course, I'm going to take the points <laughs> here with the Houston Texans. Moon off. Am I crazy? I uh, know, sir. Let's end this preseason <laughs> undefeated because we're not going to have very many wins during the season. I, I think this is going to be interesting, uh, Kramer. I know we've been going back and forth about the Texans. Which, okay, are the Texans going to have more wins in preseason or in the regular season? We're going to have to have a. <laughs> <laughs> that's a great. If they go three and zero, oh, that's, that's a, that's a pretty bet. hilarious prop bet. Because, <laughs> I mean, I know their win totals four, but man, you got to. I almost feel like I want to take it down after they get all the. They load up all these wins in the preseason. <laughs> Terrell, are you on the Texans too? Oh, absolutely. Yes. The Bucks have had huge spreads against the Bengals and the Titans and lost both games outright. So I'm definitely riding with the Texans here. I think they'll hundred percent have more wins in the preseason than in the regular <laughs> season. I actually think the Texans are going to be uh, this year's Jacksonville where they get oh. that first win in week one oh. and then they lose every <laughs> single game after that. <laughs> Well, we, we agree on the first one. And by the way, I have a we more breaking news to report a uh, friend of the program, Scott Bowser uh, d- disclosed to me that he is going to be going onions and taking the Texans as his week one survivor pick. So, uh, uh, oh, there we go. wow. That's a great, that's a great one. 
I mean, I like it. If, if you if you get it right, if I'm if I'm multi entry in a survivor pool, I'm 100% firing on an entry with Houston yeah. week one because man, that would be an advantage. All right, yep. we're all on Houston. Next up, 6:05 p.m. on the West Coast, the Los Angeles Rams head to Denver, where the Broncos are minus eight and a half, minus four ten on the money line. Rams plus three ten, 33 and a half is the total. I know McVay doesn't care about winning in the preseason, but Denver just announced their starter, and the Rams. You could argue they have some talent on that team. So, out of principle, give me the Rams plus eight and a half. Terrell, tell me why you would you're going to tell take the points here since you like all the chalk. <laughs> no. Oh, all right. There we go. <laughs> I'm not going to take the points. I'm actually going to lay them with Denver here. They they oh. blown teams out. They blown teams out this preseason. I feel like everybody thinks that because the there's so many points that Denver is not going to cover. Uh, if Locke gets majority of the snaps this game, he's going to be pissed that he's not starting. He's going to want to show them that, hey, I should have been a starter. So this is a huge yeah. number, and I can't believe I'm saying it, but I really don't, even though they're the favorite, I don't think the money's coming in on Denver. So I'm going to take them. See this? I, I knew you're going to, you tricked me and pretended like you weren't going to be chalky. You went back to the chalk. I like the handicap though. Drew Locke in a pissed off state. The only problem is I see my uh, teenage daughter when she gets pissed off and she just storms off into her room. That's what I would imagine Drew Locke is also going to do with his toys, maybe. Munaf, are you taking the points or are you laying the points? Uh, God, I, I kind of agree with Terrell here. Uh, I think this is going to be an F2 game for Drew Locke. Um, I'm not sure how many snaps or even if Teddy Bridgewater even plays in this game, but I I really like first half Denver Broncos here, especially Mm. if Drew Locke is going to get the start here. Um, Yeah. Everything Terrell said that it might be, he might be in FU mode. Um, Let's not forget, man, this, this, this Drew Locke, man, he was jamming to, I think a Rick Ross song like two seasons ago at halftime. He was, he was rapping and singing the lyrics. So this this guy, this guy will get down, man. What song Uh, was it? Um, I think it was some Rick Ross. I'll have to send you the clip. Are you saying but, yeah. that uh, that Drew Locke is a dog? Uh, I don't know if Drew Locke's a dog. We'll have to. Okay. No, it was put on by Jeezy. Oh yeah, Jeezy. There you go. It wasn't Rick <laughs> Ross. Yeah, that that was. You got to watch that. That's funny. You guys are making me feel old. All right. Next up, 7 p.m. on the West Coast, the Chargers. They head to Seattle to take on the Seahawks. We're minus five and a half, minus two fifty on the money line. Chargers plus two hundred thirty-five is the total. All right. Well. Uh, this is one of those uh, situations where, you know, what are we supposed to do? It's a Pete Carroll coached team. We generally like to back. Let's back Pete Carroll, Russ cooks moon off. Uh, yeah, this is the, it, we really have to see who is starting. The stars are playing because Seattle in the first two weeks, they've scored a whole 10 points yeah. in the, uh, in the first two games. They kind of cook. Yeah, so it's time for them to cook. Uh, this might be another game where you want to look at the first half, man. Um, yeah. I'll lay the points here with the Seattle Seahawks, man. Uh, they're at home. Let's get a victory. Let's put some points on the board, and, and let's uh, get into the season where Russell West, uh, Russell Westbrook, Russell Wilson is going to be MVP. Let's go. Uh, that's a hell of a slip because Russell Westbrook is not going to be the MVP this year. Trail, you in agreement with Seattle? <laughs> yes, I am in agreement with Seattle. Hell yeah. uh, they're zero and two in the preseason, and Pete Carroll he's gonna want to put a statement on and get these boys ready for two weeks when they gotta go to uh, Indianapolis. So I think um, Pete Carroll Pete Carroll does it here, and I'm just gonna fade the Chargers until they show me otherwise. Before, I mean, before this uh, twenty five, I think I think his number is twenty five fifteen and one against the spread coming into this year, Pete Carroll. So some positive regression certainly certainly on the horizon. All right. We're going to take a quick break before we get on to the Sunday games to talk about Paramount Plus. The summer of soccer continues on Paramount Plus. Stream over 2,000 soccer matches a year from around the world. That's all the heart pounding drama from CBS Sports, including UEFA Champions League, the Europa League, Italy's Serie A, Argentina's Primera División, the Brasiliaro, NWSL, the Asian Football Confederation. And the CONCACAF qualifiers, which featuring the stars from the US and Mexican men's national teams, plus much, much more. It's the best of the beautiful game with all the beautiful names like Messi and Mbappe, Ronaldo, Rapino, and Polisic. Be part of the excitement as champions are crowned and history is made. The world's game lives here on Paramount Plus. Visit ParamountPlus.com to start your free trial and stream every match live. All right. 
back to the action. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. Again, warming us up with a 10 a.m. kick on the West Coast. We got the Las Vegas. No, who who are the who are the Cowboys playing? Cowboys are uh, they're at home against the Jacksonville Jaguars. Thank you. I screwed that one up. Jacksonville Jaguars heading to Dallas. Dallas plus three and a half on the mo- uh, uh, on the spread. Plus one fifty on the money line. Jacksonville minus one seventy. Thirty six and a half is the total. Uh, the more I watch Hard Knocks, the more I am just like for the, just shout out to everyone who thinks the Cowboys are just going to step back into having a super dynamic offense. No problem. And just everything else is also going to get way better. You're out of your goddamn mind. They had a decent offense last year. Yes, but they were, they were, they were a couple of plays away from being one in five. <laughs> God damn it. It makes me so angry. Uh, I don't know what to think about this handicap though. So I'm going to punt it over to Terrell. Who, which side are you taking? Oh my God. I don't want to say it. I feel like they're going to make me regret it. Oh, they're going to make in me the show. They're going to make me regret it. I don't I'm going to take the Cowboys in the points Whoa. here because the they're, on, they're on hard knocks and you can't lose all four games on hard knocks. Like, is that even <laughs> it done before? Has the, has the team lost every single game on hard knocks before? Like, you can't lose all of them. Can you? I mean, you know what? I'm going to give you a pass as a giants fan. This is preseason. I see what you're doing. You're getting it out of the way during the pre moon. Oh, absolutely. Which side are we taking? Yeah. Rookie head coach, rookie quarterback. Uh, they need to get a victory here. Do the Jacksonville Jaguars. Uh, I expect Trevor Lawrence to get some significant snaps or at least, at least play a full first half for this team. Um, give me the Jaguars. I'm not, I'm not betting on the Dallas Cowboys. Uh, oh, and four, are they going to be for the preseason? Oh, and 17 for regular season. Let's go. All right. So real quick recap. Uh, I'm also going to be on the Jacksonville Jaguars moon off understands, uh, you know, the, the position he the should brain. have. And then we're going to have to get your fucking shine box, send Terrell off to get a shine box <laughs> for picking the goddamn Cowboys, Las Vegas, uh, 1 PM. Dare you, sir. We can move on. Don't worry. This, this, uh, this act will be brushed under the rug of history at SGPN 1 PM <laughs> on the West coast, the Las Vegas Raiders head to San Francisco where the Niners are three and a half point favorites minus minus one eighty on the money line, Vegas plus plus one fifty five, thirty five and a half and a half is the total John Gruden preseason stud. But Trey Lance might already be in the Hall of Fame if you talk to the right person. Moonoff, <laughs> we we're sticking to our guy, right? We're sticking to Gruden. I think you kind of have to, right? I, I think that um, uh, Shanahan's going to be more, I think, protective of his starting quarterback, especially Jimmy G. It seems like he's going to be the starter. From if I don't know if y'all saw the press conference that he yeah. had a big smile on his <laughs> face. Um, yeah, but I, think I, I, know. I think yeah, I think yeah. I know. Yeah, I'm not sure that, you know, Trey Lance. I mean, he's had some flashy plays here, but you know, we got to stay with the trends. Don't bet on red when the whole board yeah, is black, right? So let's stay let's stay with uh the Las Vegas Raiders and the John Gruden uh led Raiders. Are you uh are you joining us? Long cock. Bro. Oh, I can't join you this time oh. because I cashed a four, a uh, four hundred and fifty plus four fifty ticket for Trey Lance to be the third overall pick in the NFL draft. I'm riding with Trey Lance here. Nope, I'm going with it. 49ers minus three and a half. Oh my goodness, I love. Terrell, uh, either me and Moonoff are gonna look really smart, or you're gonna look. Yeah, yeah, I don't, really, I don't know. Really I smart. This could be really bad. Uh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> also let, let's not forget that when John Gruden saw Kyle Shanahan in high school, no! he got fully shoved in the fucking locker. Uh, real, real <laughs> quick, I want to recycle another uh, just absolute glorious nugget from the great John Gruden. Uh, when asked about uh, the new stadium he's playing in. Being called the Death Star, he said, I think it's a cool name for our stadium. I don't give a damn about Star Wars, though. Just making sure that you know that he's not a fucking nerd who watches Star Wars. Miami heads to Cincinnati, 1 p.m. on Sunday. Cincy minus two, minus 125 on the money line. Dolphins plus 105. 35 and a half is eight, is the total. Flores was pretty, is a pretty good pre I don't know. This this is a game that I I I don't really uh have much 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 of a take on. Moonoff any anything swaying you one side or the other here? 
No, I mean, I'm not sure. Uh, again, I think this is a game where you want to see who's starting, who's uh, not starting. Yeah. I believe the last thing I did see that Zach Taylor said that Joe Burrow was going to get some type of time, whether that's one series, two series, a quarter, but uh, I don't know. I'm going to, I'll say with dogs, man, give me Miami. Um, I think they have, you know, guys out there fighting for position, especially in that secondary uh, oh, sorry, the front seven, but uh, we'll see what happens. Uh, maybe a stay away here, but give me uh, give me the Dolphins. Bro? Oh, yeah, I'm riding with the team that has uh, a guy that sounds like a Texas meat as their second co- quarterback in Jacoby Brissett. Yes. I'm going to ride with him. Oh, did uh, you, I'm sorry. You mean short yardage quarterback Jacoby Brissett? <laughs> because I, I trust, uh, I trust him to get it. I mean, he, honestly, one of the nuggets we have for preseason betting that we love to, to lean on is uh, don't be afa- afraid to ride teams that had vet that have veteran quarterbacks that are going to get significant playing time in the preseason yep. Brissett, You could argue Brissett is ranked higher than 32nd in the league in terms of quarterbacks. Like he's probably better than a couple starters. So I like the handicap there. Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, right on my percent. And, um, I don't think that the Joe Burrow thing is going to be that good. He's, he's going to be rusty out there. Like, I don't, I think he's going to set them back a couple series. So I'll take the little advantage there. And it sounds like Jamar chase just sucks. Like he's already in his head about drops like that. Drops, that's not yeah. a good place to start. We saw what happened to Jerry Judy's rookie year. All right. Next up 3 PM on the West coast. My New York giants host the new England Patriots, bill Belichick, not a guy who gives a shit about the preseason. Neither is Joe judge Patriots minus three and a half minus one eighty on the money line plus one fifty five for the giants. 35 and a half is the total. I don't know if you saw the news coming out of the joint practices moon off, but mm-hmm. McCorkle Jones hall of famer ball barely hit the ground moon off. Are we, are we taking them? Now that it looks like this could be the last, this could be the last straw to get him named the starter. Yeah, I got to stay with the Patriots here, man. Yep. Uh, no disrespect to your team, I think Mac Jones is probably want to come out here and take and win this job as a starting quarterback, right? We saw the whole COVID thing or the misunderstanding by Cam. I think that opened up the door for Mac Jones come out and play well in your third preseason game, get named the starter and go out and win the rookie of the year. So let, let's go with, uh, I'm going to say with Belichick uh, against uh, Joe judge here. Terrell. Oh no, I'm riding with the oh. G man here. I can't go against my boys. Uh, Mac Jones had a great practice. He also had a bad practice. That defense got <laughs> into his head. And what he defense? Start- <laughs> oh, stop it. <laughs> oh, Stop yeah, it, Moon. He off. knows what defense. He knows what defense. James Stratberry back there. Uh so like no, that. I'm riding with the G men here. I think Joe Judge wants to go and get get one win, like at least one win. And he's playing the starters for a little bit. Hopefully they get into a rhythm early. Bill Belichick is a great dude. He gets his guys set up for success. You heard a lot about the Joe Judge coaching clinics that Belichick would run. You know a lot about how he gets his guys landed in healthy situations. Sony Michelle in Los Angeles with the Rams, a plus situation. Jimmy G getting paid like a king out in San Francisco. Thanks, Daddy, aka Billy. Well, what does Joe Judge need? A little confidence. So I'm kind of with you. I normally would not be looking to take the Giants, but I do think uh, this one they get done because old Billy makes sure that Joe Judge heads into the regular season feeling good about his unit. All right. His his football team, not his unit. That would be weird. <laughs> Cleveland heads to Atlanta, 5 p.m. The Sunday night football nightcap of the preseason. Cleveland minus six, minus two thirty-five on the money line, plus one ninety for the Falcons. Thirty-six is the total. I don't know who's going to play quarterback for Atlanta, but I absolutely like the idea of taking Atlanta with all these points, maybe even on the money line in this situation. Uh, Terrell, any reason to look at Cleveland? No, not really. It's too many points. I think that uh, both of these teams are very iffy in a preseason and it's, it's just too many points for me. I don't think I'm just going to side with the points. I have no handicap here, but Atlanta is pretty bad. Like Atlanta is pretty bad. <laughs> yeah, that's true. But I, I I'm confident Arthur Smith, he's going to find a way to get a win yeah. here. Uh, preseason week three moon off. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not sure about this one, guys. I mean, they've lost, they got blown out 37 17 in week one, 23 to three in week two. 
Oh All my right. God. I mean, who's playing you? Are you guys really trusting Josh Rosen here or whoever the quarterback's going to be for the Falcons? Give me the Browns, man. They're okay. going to be dominating all mm. throughout the season. God, I'll, I'll lay the points with uh, the, the Cleveland Browns. You might be right about them dominating uh, throughout the season. All right. Let's uh, we made it through the slate. Let's uh, th- this is what happens when I got to work all the boards. Let's uh, <laughs> b- b- before we finish, let's make sure we get everyone a quick little lock dog. And why the fuck not? We'll do a preseason uh, week three teaser as well. And of course, Happy <laughs> lock dog tease is brought to you by underdog fantasy. Use that promo code SGPN for a free $25. For your shot at a million dollars, I mean, trust me, I, I I have shares on shares. You get the free money, get the free entry into the the millions, get a, so five free entries into the puppy. It, it's all worth it. Underdog Fantasy promo code SGPN. All right, lock dog and eh, I'll I'll say if you want to throw out a parlay, whatever you want to throw out uh, for the for the last part, you can do because teasing this is is pretty stupid. Uh, I might throw out a teaser. We'll see. Moon off, lead us off with a lock, a dog, and a something special. All right. Uh, let's go with the Chicago Bears. That's a lock. Minus three. Justin nice. Fields uh making his case. I know Andy Dalton is uh still going to be the week one starter. Let's see how long that lasts, but I think it's time for Justin Fields to show out. I'll take Chicago Bears minus three as my lock. Real quick, Throw Moon off. I love the way that it was reported. Justin Fields to start preseason week three because Andy Dalton is going to start regular season game one. <laughs> Jesus Christ! So I would yeah. hate to be a Bears fan. <laughs> Drew Lock, Drew Lock, and uh, uh, Justin Fields are going to be in fu mode. So uh, nice. Yeah, uh, yeah. Look out for that. Uh, for my dog, man, this is too many <laughs> points. But why the hell not? Green Bay yes. Packers plus the three twenty. Uh, Jordan Love. Uh, you know, the bills are going to be playing their starters, but I think the, you know, green Bay Packers will make it a game and maybe get the victory here in the second, uh, in the second half of that game. So plus three twenty there, um, let's throw out a parlay instead of a tease. What do you guys think? Um, uh, let's go with the Panthers minus a three and a half. Let's go with the, uh, Baltimore Ravens minus a three and a half. And uh, John Gruden, Las Vegas Raiders. We're, let's back these uh, coaches that love winning in the preseason as a three-team parlay there. So uh, Carolina Panthers minus the points, Raiders minus the points, and the Ravens minus the points as the parlay. Nice. All right. Next up, Terrell, lock dog and something extra. All right. For the lock, it, it's pretty easy, guys. I'm not... We're going for 20 in a row here. Baltimore Ravens minus three and a half. Lock it up uh, for the dog. I was going to do the juicy dog with the Packers. I don't want to match moon off. So I'm going to go with the Houston Texans. They lock up three and oh in the preseason. Oh, and 17 in the regular season. Maybe if they don't beat Jacksonville, if they lose that game to Jacksonville, it's a hundred percent. Oh, and 17. So uh, yeah, I'm going to go with the Texans here to sweep the preseason. And then for a parlay, let's, um, let's do, let's take my, let's take my lock and my dog. So Ooh. we'll do the Texans plus four. We'll do the, uh, Ravens minus three and a half. And let's throw in the under on the giants and the Patriots game, Ooh. two teams that Two teams that don't care about preseason, two coaches that don't care about preseason. Let's throw the under in there for that. And uh one more. I oh. want to give you a 10 to 1. Oh my a 10 goodness. to 1 odds. So. Sir, the room oh, of service. course. Of course. Minus two for the Colts. Mm. Easy. Minus two for the Colts against the Lions. So that's a 14 parlay, and it's gonna pay out 12 to 1 odds. <sighs> All right. I liked all of that. Um, let's, let's keep it simple. My lock Baltimore is an easy, uh, an easy out. The uh, Houston, that could be an easy out too, but I, I'm pretty sure you told me that Kansas city was going to be playing their starters. Oh, I'm pretty yep. sure you told me that Minnesota, there might be a problem there. So let's take Kansas city. Uh, I think you even go Kansas city first half. I, I don't know what that is, but I'll, I'll give out the full game minus four and a half just to keep it simple for my dog. 
Uh, and and by the way, Carolina in in consideration as well. I just think the the starters versus non starters huge advantage uh, for my dog. I, I'm gonna copy. I got to do it because they're my Texans, and it's, <laughs> it, it, there's no reason Tampa needs to win this game. I, I don't know why. Have they not watched Houston play? They've been rolling it. Uh, so give me Houston uh, plus the ones. It's almost two to one too. It's not like they're just giving us a plus one thirty. And for my parlay, I'm just gonna keep it really simple. Give me uh, John, the Fighting John Gruden's, uh, and you can put all of these on the money line. We're not gonna mess around because t- guys just win. Uh, J- the Fighting John Gruden's on the money line. The Fighting Pete Carroll's on the money line. The Fighting John Harbaugh's on the money line. Uh, that's it. Parlay those three. Uh, enjoy the money that you will uh, enjoy the fruits of my hard work. All right, guys, uh, let's do this. Moon off. Tell everyone yes, where sir. they can find you. Yeah, find me on Twitter at sportsnerd824. Like uh, uh, Kramer mentioned, all over the SGPN website, sportsgamblingpodcast.com. Uh, DMs are always open on Twitter. I have always have guys Ooh. messaging me asking me about picks. Uh, input on things, always happy to help anybody. So, uh, whatever it takes to crush the books, but yeah, find me on Twitter and all over the, uh, SGP website. And and again, you want to hop over into slack sports gambling podcast.com yes. slash slack. You want to download the app, uh, the SGPN app where you can find all of the podcasts that moon moon off, uh, hosts MLB gambling podcast, NBA gambling podcast. And of course the new prop cast Terrell, where can people find you? All right. You know, you can find me Twitter and Instagram at really real underscore underscore all over SGP and college football is back. Yes. You're going to catch me making college football picks with the guys on the college football experience and look out for me next week because I text Kobe last earlier this week. And I told him I have a 22 Ooh. to one dog Ooh. that I'm betting week one of college football. Let's go. <laughs> I'm just going to do like a four dog salute real quick. All right. (laughs) And of course, last thing, remember to rate review, hit that subscribe, smash that subscribe button, Uh, YouTube, Apple, Spotify, wherever you listen, watch, uh, do your thing. And uh, of course, thank you for participating in the sports gambling podcast for uh, Sean stacking the money green, AKA let me go (laughs) wide again. AKA Joe Theismann, who is showing me how to be a champion every day. For Sean Green, who's off uh, vacationing uh, during the football season, don't tis, quite tis. understand this. Who approved that? I, Eagles fans. I, I don't know who approved it, but last reminder: download the SGPN app anywhere you get your apps. Apple Store, Google Play Store. There will be an announcement forthcoming. AKA, we're trying to give out a hundred thousand dollars week one. We're trying to th- give out a hundred thousand dollars week one. All you got to do is download the app. Be ready when the when you get notice at Gambling Podcast on Twitter. We'll talk about it. Subscribe to the Sports Gambling Podcast. We'll talk about it. We're giving away a hundred thousand dollars. That's the mindset we have. It's free to enter. You need the SGPN app, so get the SGPN app. And with that, thank you for participating in the Sports Gambling Podcast for the last time. We're going to thank Sean, not really for being on vacation. We're going to Jake to <laughs> thank Joe Theismann for sitting next to me all episode. And of course, we're going to thank Moon off. Thank Terrell for joining us for Sports Gambling Podcast. I'm Ryan Real Money Kramer. Let it ride.